In Kenya today, the Public Health Act states that everybody has a right to procreate. Even in the Bible, that was the first rule God mm -hmm. gave mm -hmm. to procreate. And therefore, it should be given a priority. And I want to thank uh, specifically Mark and Joyce Lay uh, for starting this conversation. It's a conversation a lot of people don't want to talk about. The issue of silence, we keep it quiet when people are suffering. We need to bring out that issue. That do not feel that it's bad. It's not you to blame for infertility. We can do something about it. I'm glad and I'm happy that through starting this in vitro fertilization bill, I have spoken to women and I am, you know, it has opened my eyes in ways that I didn't know about the pain uh, and, uh, you know, what women go through when they don't have uh, children. Most people take it for granted that they'll be able to have children if and when they choose. However, statistics shows that one in six couples trying to have a baby will experience problems in doing so. Difficulty in conceiving is a fairly common event. This is frequency increases with age. According to WHO, more than 180 million couples in developing countries, that means one out of four, uh, suffer from either primary or secondary infertility, and that uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, infertility is caused by infections in over 85 of women in comparison with or more or less one third in the rest of the world. And you ask yourself questions of why can't I have a child like any other normal person? Especially when you see all your siblings get babies like in the same month together. Whoa. And Auntie Nina has to go and take gifts and all that. Yeah. It's not a joke. Simple occasions such as Christmas, Mother's Day and Father's Day can become painful reminders of their infertility. Because I could not get children, I was divorced. I got into the next marriage. I stayed for around two years. After I stayed for two years, the guy was told that, what are you doing with Cecilia? She will never conceive. It is sad that infertility is always linked to women. Yet it is also a man's problem. Now there's a different fallacy of infallibility of male fertility. All right? Now, what this means is that the society tends to believe that men cannot be infertile. Unfortunately, many of the medical treatments for infertility focus on the woman's body. In this age and time, we must champion honest and hard conversations and confront the stereotyping. All in all, men and women are affected by infertility, but in different ways. It is not all doom and gloom as we know. As we now have assisted with productive technology to help alleviate the suffering of childless couples. While this remedy exists, the cost is extremely high. For instance, to have a baby now, uh, the cost of IVF in Kenya ranges between 375,000 up to a mark of over 2 million. It is not correct that today, if I don't have over 400,000 children, we cannot address infertility. And just across in Ethiopia is 600,000 for IVF. It is not expensive to start a simple IVF center. A simple IVF center can be started with as little as 10 million. Kenya shillings in accounting. This is the launch part of honest conversations, which we must from today move from some safe private uh, spaces, boardrooms, and conference rooms to the classrooms, newsrooms, bedrooms, sitting rooms, chat rooms, streets, and the villages. It must go viral on social media. The minds of our people must be liberated from subservience, mediocrity, and misinformation. Let us all join hands with Mark to create awareness on infertility and interventions and invest time and energy in ensuring that adequate resources are mobilized.